How's it going there, Timo? How are you doing? I'm just waiting for a bunch of people to come on. Oh, Tanya, how you doing? Uh, DJ, everybody. Uh, TikTok is going to be a little bit short today. Um, I'm like not super tired, but my brain is just not working today. Um, unfortunately, I was up till 2 a.m. talking with, well, I was talking with somebody who was on the West Coast and their time hours is four hours behind. So at 10 o'clock they were having dinner and then they wanted to have a conversation. Then someone else messaged me at 11.45 last night going through some problems um, and they need to be talked to. Uh, I don't want to say their names because it's up to them to uh, say what we spoke about and stuff like that because I don't want to tell people's business. Um, um, so anyways, uh, I didn't get to bed till like 2.45 and, um, and then uh, woke up at 5. Uh, and then went to sleep at 10 till 11 and then off and on like 15 minutes here and there all day today. Is Jesus, may his name be erased in the seventh level of hell for eternity. Uh, his name was erased even from the heavens and Jesus isn't even a real name. J's weren't in the alphabet till the 1500s. Um, so the name that you're calling Jesus, that name wasn't made up till the 1500s. It's not even the proper name. Uh, in Latin, it would be Isis, which is Jesus. Um, so, but, yeah, no, that, that name doesn't exist. Uh, Yahweh is Satan. Yahweh just means, and uh, Yeshua means serpent. Is this old scripture? Yes. Yeah, it's old scripture. Uh, Yahweh just means the Lord. That's why if you look at it, Yahweh, Yahweh, Alham, means the Lord, your God. Correct. It says, I will be the Lord your God. Yove Yave Yahlaham. Ilaham. Meaning, I will be the Lord your God. That's what Yav Yahve Yave Ali Aliham Alaham means in Hebrew. It's not a true name. It's not a true name. Al Ali Aliam. Uh, is uh, not the name forbidden to say his name in vain it is forbidden to say his name in vain that's why his name uh, was not to be uh, pronounced uh, as you remember it was only high priests who were allowed to speak of his name you are allowed to pray unto the the God of the heaven the heaven of heavens you are allowed to pray but only he would reveal himself to righteous people um, and then we could tell that it was Satan who was, um, it was who they were speaking to because the character, this God, Abraham and Sarah, he was, uh, he was fond of Abraham. Abraham was a deceiver. He went to Pharaoh, tried to sell off his AKA sister slash wife and lie about it because his faith that his God told him to go to Egypt. He was afraid they would murder him. Where was his faith? Your God told you to go to Egypt and the first thing you're going to say is, why would my God send me to Egypt? They're going to kill me. Tell them you're my sister because you're beautiful. If you say you're my wife, they're going to definitely kill me. Jacob. Jacob was a deceiver. His mother made him deceive with Esau. Yes, Esau sold his birthrights. Doesn't matter. Two wrongs don't make a right. This is not algebra. This is not algebra. Two negatives don't make a positive. So she turned around and deceived and said, I will take this curse. He knew it was a curse and still went on with it to deceive his father who was supposed to give a blessing to Esau. Whether Esau was a good person or not, we don't know. He sold his birthright. It doesn't say Esau was a bad person, but we know that the Lord did not like Esau. Well, what did Esau do that was so bad? But we know Jacob deceived. We know that Jacob deceived. So the Lord found favor in him. The Lord found favor in David. David had women killed. Uh, women and men, children, except for young girls who did not know men, which meant to have sex with. So virgins, to keep them as concubines. So why would they do that? That was who their God favored. Moses, same thing with Moses. Moses was, went, went in and uh, did the same thing. All of them did the exact same thing. And this is the God who they served. 
Um, yeah, well, it kind of makes it kind of makes sense with all of it, right? But anyways, so who are they talking to, right? Is the Tanakh scripture? Is the Tanakh scripture? Tanakh means teachings in Hebrew, right? So the teachings have been manipulated. That's why we could tell. Is it not say in the teachings, I am an unchanging God? Does it say that I am an unchanging God? Torah and the Tanakh. Does the God of the Torah and the Tanakh say I am unchanging? For my ways will stand until the end of time, until judgment. Do they say this? Yes or no? In the scripture, does it say that? Okay, so now let me ask you. Did he not tell Adam and Eve, you shall only eat vegetables, grain, and the herbs that I've planted on this earth? Noah was a righteous man. He was a vegan and never did these things. Then after the flood, a God spoke to him and said, now you may eat meat, but with no flesh in it. Is that not changing? Is that not a changing God? If Noah was a righteous man who knew all the ways of the Lord, why would then, when he was off the boat, someone spoke to him to tell him, you've been on a boat for a little while, I had you in a clothed cabin, and you might have gotten a little bit of brain damage or Alzheimer's, just in case you don't remember my laws, I'm going to give you a new one and tell you you can eat meat. No, man. He destroyed the earth because they were eating meat. They were having sex with animals. They were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Right? So they were not serving. Nope. They were never serving the Most High. They never served the Most High. Now let's go into this. In Exodus 3, does it not say that an angel of the Lord showed himself to Moses in a burning bush? Yes, he did. Correct? He showed himself to Moses in a burning bush. Then he spoke with Moses. And what did he say to him? He says, my name is Ahia. And this will be my name forever. Why is everybody talking about Yahweh and all these other names if the name was Ahia? Uh, I don't know anything about the third book of Enoch. I only know the first two. I don't, I don't know anything about the third book of Enoch. Because the third book of Enoch uh, was not written by Enoch. So I don't, I don't dab into the third book of Enoch. So, um, but anyways. Then if you go to Jeremiah 7, 21. Ever since I led you out of Egypt, I have never spoke with you. So, let's see here. Did he actually speak with him? Did he actually speak with him? Right? So, who, is, who are these guys claim that they're speaking to? They're not speaking to the Most High. They are not speaking to the angel. If you look even at Daniel, when you read the book of Daniel, it'll tell you the Ancient of Days and it will say God. It does not use Yahweh. In the book of Daniel, read the book of Daniel. It does not use the name Yahweh. And he prayed to the God of the heaven of heavens. That was his term that he used. That was a term that he used. So why is he praying to the God of the heaven of heavens? That goes to tell you something else. And he was a vegan also. Remember? He said, I do not wish to eat the king's food, the riches of the king's food. For feed us vegetables and water and watch our countenance. For we will be better than any of the sorcerers that you have in this land. Go to Ezekiel 28. Uh, sorry, 14.10. Even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were alive today, only these three men would I save. That's 595 BC that the book of Ezekiel allegedly was written. So, by the math and by what the scripture tells us, only those three men would be saved. Not even Moses. And how do we know that Moses was cursed? Moses was told, the only reason why you are going to see the kingdom of, of the, the land of milk and honey, sorry, not the kingdom, the land of milk and honey is because I made a promise that you will see it, but you will not step foot in it. That's a holy land. He forbid him to step into where they called was the holy land. What did he do? 
but we don't know what he did that could have been that bad. We do know that he was chastised for splitting the rock and saying, I commence thee to break this rock and give water. When the Lord said to him, it was not you who broke that rock. I gave you the power to break this rock for you shall never claim that you've done anything for you were my, just a mere servant, a vessel. I used you to do this to lead the people because I heard their cry. So no man can claim to be anything special. It's only by the will of the Father, by the Most High, right? So, um, and you can just tell there's a lot of things that don't add up with the uh, with 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 the Old Testament. Sometimes like, that God sounds like he's evil, and then all of a sudden he's like, "But I I love my people, and I don't want you to die. I want you to turn from your sins." That's the long suffering and merciful one. That one's the righteous one. You can tell because somebody who really cares about somebody, even though they're hurt, they won't say bad stuff about them. They'll say, oh, please come back. You call them the pushover. You call them something bad, right? You think that they're weak. No, the Most High is not weak. He just feels for his people, his unconditional love. He understands, right? Knowing of all things. So he understands why people fail. So Book of Numbers was puzzling. Ah, yeah, the Book of Numbers is too as well. But anyways, but yeah, but I was going to come on here. I was going to explain about the years of tribulations. Tomorrow I'm going to come on and I'm going to break down all the tribulations, the years, the times. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of praying and ask if I can figure out so we can put together when the, the, the signs are given. Can't We can't confirm because everything is by faith, obviously, right? But we can't confirm um or we can't uh can't confirm 100 percent, but we could say we know we are in the end of days we know that we are past certain bowls of wrath that are poured uh because we could tell the plagues and because of everything that's happening we could tell that a, a large chunk of the earth is about to be shattered by this these large earthquakes hundreds of earthquakes are happening a day now this is getting crazy and um yeah, and we'll break down some uh, thing. Uh, what scripture should we use? Uh, all scripture, you should read all scripture. All scripture. Use everything. Read it all. Um, uh, I don't pick and choose what's real in the Bible. I just show you who's speaking by their fruits and what they bear. I don't pick and choose what's in the Bible. Any person who's on my live will tell you I don't pick and choose. I read the whole Bible and I show you could this be a righteous person who speaks like this? And I show them and put them in their shoes. I explain the situation. I don't sit there and do that. Oh, uh, yeah, there is an oscillator, Johnny, that they actually use. Uh, Nikola Tesla made one back in the day to cause all these things. But no, there's something else that's going to happen. Uh, what do you think of the coming age of Aquarius? Coming age of Aquarius, I do not believe in all of those types of things. Um, that was a, a pre-programmed system. The Dark Ages, all that stuff. I don't care what anybody says. It's been the Dark Ages since the beginning of time. Man is fall from grace. We've all sinned. We all walk blindly in this world. We serve our flesh. We do not serve the Most High. Um, we do um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, can I do prophecies? Yes. You could actually go back in all my videos and see the prophecies that I've said were going to come true. And within four to six months, they've all came true. And I document them and tell them what was going to happen and everything like that. Um, all glory to the Most High. And half the time when I'll say something, I don't even realize why I say it. Honestly, most of the time I'll say something and I'll be like, why did I run my mouth and say something like that? Like, what the heck was that? And sure enough, I'll sit there and something will happen. And uh, people will come on and say, yo, you know that thing you were talking about like a week, two weeks ago? Yeah, it happened. Like, that's crazy how you called it. Uh, many people can verify, but uh, I don't care about prophecy and uh, doing all that kind of stuff. What I care about is showing people the truth. Um, so that they will build their relationship with the Most High. I'm not here to show my powers and show you what I'm able to do. That's not what I'm here to do. It is not about me. It is not about walking around like Jesus did. Walking on water and uh, filling glasses of uh, uh, water with wine. And partying with a bunch of people. Um, that is not going to save a soul. Uh, it's not going to do anything. And that will probably get you to fall down, get drunk and bump your head. So I'm not into any of that sorcery. Um, this is end days where we shall be in woo uh, for the world is under destruction because the devil knows his time is short.
So I'm more into the showing of knowledge for you to open your eyes into scripture and you to call and pray to the Most High and ask for discernment and say, please, I see a lot of people are on TikTok. They're exposing a lot of things, but I'm worried that I'm being deceived through this whole world. So I want to test everything. Please, I'm a mere human. Am I worthy of your knowledge? Probably not. But your promise was if I seek you, you said if I if I earnestly seek you and humbly come to you, you will answer. I'm not asking you or telling you, you got to hold your promise. No, I'm begging you and I come to you because I need your mercy. Because without your mercy, I am not forgiven. So that's how I look at everything and that's how we're supposed to, right? Uh, to wrestle with the God is to regain uh, the you that is out. No, you are not God. Nobody is God. That is the devil who tells people that we are our own gods. You are not. God is nothing. Not, uh, is not a mere human nor a worm. It tells you that in scripture. So you're going to tell me then we have to counteract and say, so in this verse he says, God is not a human. And in this verse it says that you are like gods. And to be like gods is different than saying you are gods. Right? So, there's a huge difference, and you have to look at the interpretation, because you have to look at what the context of the statement that they're using. You are not like God, because you cannot be like God. God is immortal, you cannot die. He manifests, you cannot manifest. If you think that you manifest because you say, I'm going to go and get a job, and next you know is, you get off your rear end and walk, and apply for a job, are you telling me you're a prophet because you prophesied because you said you were going to do this and manifested as a God and said that you're going to get a job? No, you cannot manifest. You cannot manifest. Okay, if you can manifest and stop COVID and stop earthquakes and stop child hunger out in, in Africa. If you can manifest, how come everybody that prays and all the people around the world, we all feel sorry for children in Africa when we see those commercials and see them eating bowls of rice. You don't do nothing, Leo. You're false. You're false. And I'll call you out right on it. Uh, no, Jacob did not struggle with God. He couldn't have. God does not come down from his throne. For the earth is my footstool and the throne is my heavens. I shall send my servant. Right? There's no, there's, God does not come down, not until the end of days. That will be the day of the great wrath. That will be the day of judgment, right? It says that. Uh, Jesus didn't manifest. Um, and again, you use the word amen, which is amen Ra, which is a sun god. Um, yeah, Stacy's on here. I know she's always on point when she uh, sees people who say something, something dumb. But anyways, I'm not here on here to debate. Uh, you show me scripture where it says that you can do this. Show me in a scripture where it says that you have the power to manifest. Show me in the scripture where you can do that. And then if you're going to tell me, well, they took it out of the Bible to hide it so we wouldn't know who and what we can actually do down here. Okay, so then now you're going to tell me you read from a book that you claim who you speak to is removed, which says that he shall be cursed for anybody who does this. Now I'm going to ask you, well, how powerful is your God that he allowed a book to be corrupted by mankind? So you ought to know how to decode this book. This book has truth in it. It has things that are in it. All different Bibles have different, uh, different uh, books in them. Some of them were removed. Some of them are still in the Roman Catholics, and etc. Right? I guess she's doing spell Enoch. I don't know what you mean. Is the earth flat? Yes, earth is flat. It's just common sense. Look at the earth. You can just tell it's flat. Why is there such thing as called sea level? There would be nothing's level. You can't call sea level. You should say sea height, um, something like that, coordinates. They would use that, not sea level. So there is a level. How do you fill a, uh, a, bo uh, a bowl uh, with water and say that it's gravity? If you're 70% water and the world's 70% water and 30% earth and you're made of 30% earth, since you are made from earth as an earthling and you are 70% water, how can we all walk to grow big and tall? Why don't our bones, when you see people with bone deficiency, they can grow in some weird shapes, not to put anybody down. It's just when you see something that's not abnormal or normal, it's abnormal and it looks weird to you. Um, why aren't we all walking around looking like pancakes, like Oompa Loompas? 
because if we're 70% water, we should all be flat like water. Why does water not run in one direction if we all spin at 1,006 miles an hour, which is 1,669 kilometers an hour, in one direction? Why is there different wind in different directions if we spin on that? So, you know what I mean? It can't be. It can't be. Exactly. Water finds its level. Exactly. So on any floor, if we are spinning and you're telling me somebody, unfortunately, all the people who are jumping out of the Twin Towers... When they were jumping out of there, um, how's it going there, true love? Um, when they were jumping out of the Twin Towers at 100 and something miles an hour, you will watch somebody who's doing on Mythbusters, any of these shows, they jump out of a car to see how fast they can. They jump out of a car at 60 kilometers an hour. Do you tell me now, when they jump out of that car at 60 kilometers an hour, do they land in the same spot? Do you land in the same spot? If you jump from somewhere going 60 kilometers an hour. No, you don't. You don't. So, how if the world's spinning at 1,000 miles an hour underneath your feet? How can you jump out of a building and land right below the window that you just dropped out of? It's not possible. Uh, flat earth is, uh, it, uh, to mention, it does say it's biblical. It is. It says we're in a firmament. We are, tra we are trapped in a firmament. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, we can see that the sun and the moon doesn't go the way that they say. When you check out on a flat earth and you watch the weathering system, you can see that during the Southern hemisphere, all of the places that are on the lower of the globe, uh, design, all of them get hot. But yet they tell us that it spins around like this and the axis of the world just turns. So then that would mean it would be going north and south, north and south, north and south. That's how the sun would work. Well, these places don't get hot and these places get hot and this is cold and that's cold. No, all of the lower hemisphere gets hot and all the, lower, uh, all the upper hemisphere gets cold. Then when it's springtime and summer for up here, then all of these areas are all hot. So how does that work on a ball where you're going around like an elastic band? It doesn't make logical sense when you actually think about it with your brain. But anyways, um, I don't know, uh, Stace, I don't know if what's her name's on here. Um, um, and thing, uh, what about the uh, movement coming back to the obedience that, uh, but believing in Yeshua? Uh, false, false. How are they going to say that they are the ones? And second of all, if you're going to say that's a prophecy that was to be fulfilled, then they would be going back to their land. That's what it says, correct? Yes or no? I shall bring them back to my land, to the Holy Land. They wouldn't be making a movement. They would be going back to their land. So they're not, uh, they're, it's, they're, they're, it's, it's, it's baloney. They wear purple, and we know the dragon and the harlot wears purple and scarlet. The abomination to the Most High. That tells us that in, I think it's, uh, is it uh, 14 and 18? The abomination. But, but yeah. Well, no, I was going to say to you, Stacy, because I am, like I said, I'm just tired. And I'm not in the mood to debate with anybody. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, that I'm going to get off. Uh, amen, Amin, is Aman Ra. A M U N R A, also spelt Amen, Amin, um, Amun. Um, and I don't want to keep chanting these names when these guys uh, are saying it because it's blasphemous to speak of this name. Uh, Isaiah 66, uh, 66 1. Uh, for uh, the, the people shall come together, the cows. Uh, the cows and all the animals shall come together. They shall eat grass. No, no person shall die at a young age. My people will grow up to be as old as trees. Anyone who shall die at a hundred years and less shall be cursed. You talking about that verse there, Johnny? Uh, aren't there 20 commandments? No, there's many, many commandments, but the 10 commandments just sums it up. Think of PowerPoints. Think of like a, in a, uh, a presentation. Um, you have your PowerPoints. Thou shall not murder. Okay, well, what does murder mean? Don't kill this. Don't kill that. Don't do this. Don't stab somebody. Don't shoot somebody. Don't uh, cut somebody. Uh, that's 
a one thing that tells you all of those. So it's a PowerPoint. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's uh, the neighbor's things, not just his wife, but na your neighbor's uh, stuff. Meaning, don't uh, worry about their house. Don't be jealous of it. It means all kinds of stuff like that. So that's a PowerPoint, right? So there's many commandments. Uh, those are just the PowerPoints of what we're supposed to follow. But those are the morals that we were born with, right? For my laws are written across your hearts and your minds. For a good person shall bear good seeds. A bad person will bear bad seeds. So God is everything. God is good. God is within you. Uh, no, God is only with the people who are his chosen. And only those who obey his voice is he with. Um so you can't say that God is with uh, every person because it tells us strictly in uh, scripture, uh, many are called, few are chosen. And when you do the math, it says a third shall be wiped out from disease, a third shall be wiped out from plagues, or sorry, uh, from uh, disaster, wars, um, and a third shall be wiped out from um, famine. So uh, out of 700 and something billion, uh, or 7.75 uh, 7 billion, there's only going to be 750 million people who make it. A tenth of the world, and they will be my people, and I shall even test them. That's what the scripture teaches us. So, a tenth of the people. Are you going to tell me that God is within everybody? God cannot be within every person and every soul that way. Why is it pro proven that way? Because the Most High cannot walk with somebody who is unholy. Can't. Can't. It's a promise that all the Nephilim and all of the fallen shall be punished and their children, the Nephilim and the Sirens, all of them shall be punished. All of them, right? So you can't, you can't say that. Uh, most people are, uh, are, uh, are programmed, unfortunately. They wear, uh, uh, it does it not teach you in scripture that you shall not touch a dead carcass or do any of these things, right? Well, what is, what is makeup made for, for women? What is makeup made for, 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 for women? That's right. Dead animal fats. You are cursed every day that you put makeup on your face, which was taught to you by a fallen angel, a zezel. Uh, sorry, not a zezel. Um, uh, bra. Hold on. Yeah, makeup is trickery. Did Eve, when she came out, turn around and say, Oh, Adam, can we go to uh, Sophia's, please? Is it Ezekiel? No, it wasn't Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Azazel, sorry. It was Azazel, I was correct. At the beginning. Yeah. For Azazel taught them uh, these things. So the beautifying of the eyelids, the cutting of sores, the cutting of roots, all of this stuff. It was Azazel. That's why all sins were made unto him. Right? So, but yeah. So you're not supposed to. You're not, so, you're not supposed to. Ouch, come on. How we present doesn't mean we are not united with God. False. False. Thou shalt who serve thy flesh is vanity. It is a sin. Vanity is a sin. If you're telling me that you have to be good looking for somebody to take you serious, you're in vain yourself. I'm not taking this guy serious. He looks like a homeless guy. I'm not going to listen to this guy. But if he sat there with perfect teeth and he looked like Tom Cruise or something like that, I wouldn't say Tom Cruise, but somebody who was supposed to be all nice looking and all that other stuff, a poster child of the white Jesus that they put in all these churches, are you going to tell me, oh my gosh, he's so dreamy, his eyes, and do you see the way his beard and his hair flows? Like he must use herbal essence. I'm going to take that man serious. Snap out of it, buddy. Snap out of it. <laughs> Look, you're not supposed to do that that's vanity do not measure the outer temple for the outer temple belongs to the people who do not serve god you are the temple do not do not measure the people who uh pray outside the temple that's the people who are doing it with vanity and all that other stuff you ain't supposed to you're naturally beautiful that's why when you look at girls innocent children they don't wear makeup what are your children and when you see that they're going to start wearing makeup, what's the first thought that comes out of your head? Why do you look like a slut right now? 
Why do you want to grow up to look like an older woman? Why do you look at a woman, and this is guilty as charged for all men, why do you look at a woman when she puts on a red dress and red lipstick, you start thinking naughty thoughts, period. So you cannot tell me that is not the devil's medicine to put on people for us to appreciate a woman and not realize her inner heart and her soul and spirit, who she is on the inside, the value of them. No, they got to have that perfect Kim Kardashian ass that looks beautiful so you can bang it from behind and not look into your wife's eyes when you make love to her. No, you want to fuck like an animal and hit her doggy style. Snap out of it, buddy. Snap out of it. This is the devil's, this is the devil's playground and you guys are all falling to it. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a reality and I'm not going to sugarcoat it for anybody. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for anybody. We justify people by what they wear, what shoes they have, what car they drive, how big their house is, watches, jewelry, everything that they do. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. We want to be like superstars and be like all these other people, but you don't realize your true potential and that you, you, you are your own superstar. You're not supposed to look at all these other people for this crap, man. You're not. These guys are just to get you to want to be like them. Idolization. Oh my God. LeBron James, that's my like my idol dog. Like that guy's like the best ba basketball player ever in the world. That's idolization. That's why they call him your idol. Who is your idol? No, who is your mentor? Who is somebody who can teach you something and give you better understanding, right? Uh, we do not all fall short for that is on yourself because of your lack of understanding that you choose to serve the flesh it Does not say that we all fall short. We do not fall short. You make a choice. You have two masters Do you serve the flesh which is vanity worldly things material crap or do you serve the spirit which is inside? Which is humanity teaching teaching and treating people with love and respect and helping any person who is out there you tell me that's two masters. Those are the masters that they speak of. Right? No problem, Lindsay. It's not that. It's, it's, it's just true. It's The problem is, is we are programmed. We are programmed so we lose that grasp that there is someone that is out there. Uh, read the Quran? Uh, no, I will not read the Quran about a Muslim, Muhammad, who has sex with a nine-year-old girl and is promised if he's a good boy, he'll have many virgins in the heavens. I'm sorry. Uh, God, Allah, whatever you want to call him, is not Biggie Smalls where he's saying, I'm a pimp, I'm up in heaven, and I got some of the most beautiful women up here waiting for you that have never been with a man. This is my promise to you if you keep my laws and my commandments. Snap out of it. Okay? We're not into little girls and all the trafficking and all that kind of stuff. We don't, we don't do that. Where does it say that in the Quran? Aisha. Aisha is his wife. At six years old, they were married. At nine years old, they consummated. Go and look it up. So, uh, what should our life look like today? Obey scripture. What would our life look like? Um, think about as a child. Watch children. They don't judge each other. They enjoy all, their, uh, all the things that they do. Um... They uh, share their toys. They're not greedy. They don't hold the true value of money. You see kids all the time. You see kids trading toonies and loonies and they're like, what did you just do? You gave like $10 away and you traded for a quarter. I like the quarter. It just looks nicer. They don't have any true value to it or anything like that. They don't see color. They don't see gender. They don't understand any of that stuff. They're innocent. They're pure, right? That's what the world would look like. We would all act like children. We wouldn't feel embarrassed when we trip and fall. We wouldn't look around to see who's seen that because we'd feel like a jackass. So, we're not, that's, that's what the world would be like. You would laugh at yourself when things happen. You would just shake your head like, oh man, <laughs> how did I see that coming? And there would be no, no embarrassment. There would be none of that stuff, right? But yeah, that's what the world would be like. Now, most people think, well, it's going to be like all goody-goody. Like we're all going to walk around like monks and everything like that and not look at people and, you know, be fully dressed in all these crazy clothes. So you can't see a person by their curves or anything like that. 
No, oh, man, it's nothing like that because we wouldn't look at each other like that. We're all brother and sister down here. There's one race called the human race. And then there's the fallen angels. They're the seed of Cain, the serpents, uh, whatever you want to call them, reptilians, whatever you want, shapeshifters, aliens, whatever you want to refer to them as. Those are the two breeds that are down here, the chosen and the unrighteous, right? Uh, I must not have children? Uh, no. Uh, the Most High told me that I am not allowed to have children. I am not to do that. Why would I want to raise children? Are you happy with today's, uh, are you happy today with a child that you've raised? Are you happy? Are you so proud of the school that you pay a government to send your child to today? Are you so proud to send your kiddo and wonder, are they going to do drugs and do all this shit in a terrible world today? Please tell me you're such a proud parent to do all those things. I'm not. <laughs> Hence why I knew I am not going to turn around and have any children. I'm not going to have any children. It's just the way it goes. Why would I want to raise a child when I knew what was coming? I knew this was coming a long time ago. I used to question myself. Why don't I feel like I want to have a wife and be like everybody else? Why do I feel like I want to be that way? Right? I don't. Are all aliens bad? Yes, aliens are bad. Aliens are bad. Because you remember, fallen angels are the ones who that are, went and mingled with people. Uh, guardian angels and all that stuff are not to mingle with people. They show them stuff in dreams. They would help them. Um, unexplainable supernatural uh, phenomenons. But they are not to be exposed. The angel doesn't come out and say, Hey, nice to meet you. My name is Michael. Don't forget me. And then they take off. No. Fallen angels come and show you, Oh, all promises. I'll give you this. I'll give you that. I'll do all these things for you. I hate that I brought kids in this world. You can't hate that you brought kids in this world, but it's a very tough struggle. You cannot hate. Hate is a very strong word, but it is a huge struggle that you have to actually question and say, what were you thinking? Now, majority of people, unfortunately, when they did get knocked up, was in a bad situation. Thankfully, you chose not to have an abortion because that would be just devastating. But in the circumstances, how many people are really on here that say that I planned this, I wanted it to be this way, and my husband or my wife, etc., wanted it to go that way, right? So, yeah. And that's how it goes with most of us. I caught an angel like a figure posing in a picture with me once. That's cool. Uh, don't live in fear of God. It's a fairy tale. I don't live in fear of God. I only fear to disappoint. There's not a fear. I thought we were to multiply. Multiply? Be fruitful and multiply. Uh, what is uh, to be fruitful and multiply? Uh, to give understanding and show each other. If I turn around and I said to you, yo, let's go and start these things um, and get uh, things going here. Um, uh, uh, let's get a, a gathering of people. Are we not multiplying in our strength and our belief and our, in our knowledge? Go and be fruitful. Fruitful means by the fruits you bear. You can tell if a good person or a bad person by the fruits they bear. So are you going to tell me that everybody was walking around with their dicks hanging out, having sex and saying, you can tell by uh, the fruits I bear because look at all my children. They're all giants. No, it was talking about the fruits by the goodwill and by the good things that you do in this world. You guys have taken scriptures and literally took it way out of context and you have no clue what you read. You read it as a book. This is a personal letter from the Most High to tell you exactly what's going to happen. Fruit, exactly. Fruitful is not about having children. That's correct. Uh, no, I am far from a maniac. Uh, exactly. They are the future. They are the future. Yes. Uh, can we be friends? Uh, of course we could be friends. I'm friends with anybody who walks in righteousness. I'm friends with anybody who walks in righteousness. Anybody who wants to like learn and actually sit there and go through scripture. Right now I'm not because I was planning on getting off of here almost ASAP. Um, not having children is selfish? No, it's not. No, it's not. Um, most of the high priests that you would say is in scripture didn't actually have children. They were forbidden to have it. They were called eunuchs. I'm not sure if you actually know what that means. But anyways, they were uh, told not to have children. Mighty prophets, many of them did not have children. They were told not to because they dedicated their lives to the Most High. Uh, so where do you say that it's selfish? Those who shall bear children shall bear children. Those who are meant to be teachers will be teachers. Those who will be uh, healers shall be healers, etc. So, you know, having kids is selfish. Uh, I wouldn't say having kids is selfish, but we do have children in the wrong ways. 
we do have uh, uh, children in the wrong ways. Thou shalt not bear children the way that they do, right? We shouldn't. Okay, so Enoch spoke of a Savior. Who is a Savior? You and I. Um, uh, Enoch uh, never spoke of a Savior. Enoch was raised up to be the highest man. Uh, chapter 71, verse 14. You, Enoch, a righteous man, uh, you are the son of man, and for the head of days forsakes you not. That's what the scripture tells him. That's why I laugh when people say, no, he's seen the Savior, he's seen Yeshua, or Jesus Christ, or whatever name they want to say. Um, you know, so why would they uh, say that, uh, that, and then say that they don't, they don't believe in the book of Enoch. If he was speaking and prophesying about the, uh, about the Messiah, to say that it was that one, then it would, uh, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have taken it out, right? So, in the book of Enoch tells you Enoch is the Messiah. Uh, do you understand there are more than one Enoch? Yes. Uh, there was one, uh, Methuselah. Methuselah is Enoch's son. So, uh, it's not Methuselah's family. It's Jared's family, because Jared's Enoch's father, and Methuselah is his son. So, it's not Methuselah's family, because uh, he's under Enoch. So, I'm not sure if you know the genealogy, but, um, no, it's from the line of Seth. Again, you're way back up. You got, you're going in the opposite direction, right? So, um, what do you think of Mormonism? Never read into it. Don't know anything. Um, so, I can't really comment or say anything on it. Um, so, I don't know how and what their laws are. So, I can't uh, speak on that. Uh, that must be where the, they got skins from the other Enoch. Uh, no, they have skins. There's no, it's not that. Um, people were just uh, the way that they were created back in the day. Um, it's just Cain uh, has a son named Enoch as well, which was the uh, Anunnaki, which is the fallen angels, which is known as Thoth, uh, the Egyptian god uh, that they worshipped. So it's a different Enoch. Um, it's still from the same genetic line. Uh, yes, but you said that it was uh, Methuselah's family. It's not Methuselah's family. So I'm correcting you. Sorry to be technical. But yes. Uh, th uh, three greatest Thoth. Uh, no, he's not the greatest Thoth. Thoth was, Thoth was defeated, man. He was defeated by the real Enoch. Uh, mercy over justice or ju justice over mercy. I'm referring only humans. Mercy over justice. This is a good one. Yeah, it's his son, but Methuselah is not is not the is not fan, is not the family, right? He's under him, because you said when I said Enoch, you said yeah, Methuselah's family. So I guess on a technicality, you could say that it's his father and not his family, but no, um, you don't know. I I own it. I own it. Um, um, you don't know. The difference between the two of them. Uh, was Cain Adam's son or Satan? Satan. Uh, it tells you that. That's how we could tell it was Satan's son. Because she said it was the help with the Lord. And then when you look at the genealogy of Adam, his first child was Seth, who was like him. When you look at all the genealogy, it is the firstborn of each male. It tells you their name and then tells you how long they lived, etc. And who their son was. And then they had more daughters and sons to go with them. Right? Uh, what do you think about Malzachalzadek? Malzachalzadek didn't exist. That's false doctrine. Because Malzachalzadek is, if you actually look into the book of Yasher, tells you that it was Noah's brother. If there was a flood and they wiped out everybody's family and Noah and his wife and his three children and their three wives were the only ones to survive a plague or a flood, as it is said in the Bible, then how did Noah have a brother who then had a child with Nair and bore a child named Malzachalzadek, which later on they tell you was a child that had no mother or no father and came into existence from nowhere. Uh, Enoch, uh, government is now talking about UFOs, people that think that the Anunnaki are going to reveal themselves. They're not going to reveal nothing, man. That's Project Blue Beam and all this other crap. It's all Project Blue Beam. That's what they were preparing for, an alien invasion and all this other stuff. Who is Metatron? Metatron is Enoch. That is his heavenly name. Meta and Tron means to measure, right? A measurer. So an angel with a measuring rod. 
That is Metatron, God's sacred geometry, is all by sacred geometry. Mathematician, measuring. All things are by numbers. You need numbers to make things. Two uh, protons to one neutron, etc. It's all by mathematical numbers. Numbers don't lie, right? Um, but anyways. So the flood is fake? Yes, the flood isn't actually real. The flood's not real. It was a flood that was given, a deluge. They changed the word to a flood of waters, and it was actually of diseases. It tells you that in the book of Enoch as well. And this is how we can prove this. Because I'm going to ask you this. Yes or no, by the genealogy, Noah's wife was uh, from the line of Seth as well. If Noah's wife was from the line of Seth, and they were all blood because they were not to sleep with the Canaanites... Where did we get Asian people from? Where did we get all these other uh, nations that look different? Not the skin color, but their body and bone structures look completely different. If Adam and Seth, Adam, Eve, and Seth, and they bore children, how did we get all the different looks of people? Intermingling? It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It's impossible. And anybody who's going to go to science and try to discredit this, then you believe in science, which opposes God. And that opposes God, then you can't trust science, right? Uh, why he build a boat then? He was, to build, he was to build an ark, a vessel. The word they use is a vessel. You are the vessel. I am a vessel of God. Is that not what the scripture teaches you? You think that it was to build a boat. It says to build a large vessel, something that will be able to protect him and his family, a covenant, an ark. A covenant, an ark, meaning I will make a vow down onto you. It's not silly. It's not silly. Okay, so when you look at, uh, so first of all, let's look at the uh, flood. There's two days where it says that the floods were different lengths in the Bible. There's two different groups of animals, seven of each, good and bad. And then there's a number, he says, take two of every animal. Uh, male and female. So we have two different contradictions in the Bible that speak of this. Um, and then uh, if you actually look up where gopher wood is, gopher wood is from Florida. So it couldn't even have been over in Jerusalem where they claim all of these things did happen. Um, so they wouldn't have found this. Uh, when they found this boat that you are saying is a boat on uh, uh, Mount Arif Arafat, um, they've dated the wood back to 2,000 years ago. Not 6,000 years ago. 5,000 years, sorry. 5,000 years ago. It didn't go to it. So, again, what are your beliefs on the shape of the earth? It's not beliefs, it's knowledge. It's flat. Look at your, use your brain and use your eyes. You can tell. I already talked about this in the beginning of, uh, of my TikTok a long time ago. But true science and true religion match. False. Religion is nothing but division bunch of different gods who claim that they are the same gods speaking to different people in a different way, but yet they all argue with each other. And that God doesn't tell them, yo, shut up. Don't argue with your, your Islamic brother. I speak to them in Arabic. Don't argue with Christians. I spoke to them in Greek and Aramaic. Don't speak to the Jew, uh, Jews that way. I spoke to them in Hebrew. I am the same God who spoke to all of them. I commence the Holy Spirit to speak on to you and stop fighting with each other because you are my people. You wouldn't have everybody right now saying the Jews are not the righteous people. The black people are that were from Africa. Africa is where actually Judaism starts from. You would not have this argument if religion and science match each other. Completely false. Uh, science only matches religion because it's the heliocentric system. Everything around sun worship. Sun worship is the devil. To worship the sun, right? That's what it is. To worship the sun. We revolve around the sun. That's what they want us. We are nothing but a small speck of dust in the universe going around a sun that is the biggest star. Again, star worship, what is forbidden in scripture that you shall not do. We worship the star and put the sun as that's what we need for everything to be. No, man. That's not how it is. It's a lesser light and a good and a and a, a lesser light and a uh, brighter light. Uh, what do you think Jesus thinks of your humor? Uh, Jesus thinks of my humor. Uh, Jesus is Lucifer. Uh, no, Jesus does not see me as John the Baptist. 
Jesus does not see me as John the Baptist. I would see me more like Michael the Archangel. Michael the Archangel. I'm not saying I'm Michael, by the way. Just for anybody who's like, what do you mean by that? I'm not saying I'm Michael the Archangel. But that's how Jesus would refer to me. So. But anyways. But anyways, um, what about the 144,000? Um, the 144, uh, my journey will never end. My journey never ends. Um, 144,000, the 144,000, as you read into the scripture, tells us that it is the voices of the saints who cry out from the heavens uh, with the Lamb who was slain for vengeance on their blood that was shed. Many people are trying to say the 144,000 is the double helix system, as long as you didn't take the mark of the beast, uh, which makes it to uh, 216, which is 666, meaning the mark of the beast. Um, it's not. Uh, the 144,000 is the beings from the heavens. It clearly states that in scripture and they are males who did not defile themselves with women. That's what the scripture teaches. That's what the scripture states. It is the 144,000 who did not, who did not defile themselves with women. Uh, no scripture, just man's words. Uh, no, I'm using scripture. Uh, it's just my, my bad that I can remember scripture because I've studied this while you have to see it in front of you with a book and read it exactly word for word and you can't sit there and comprehend what I say and you are quick to judge and talk a bag of crap. And so let's, let's go to it. Let me, let me grab my Bible for you there, buddy. Let me grab my Bible for you. And then I'm going to read it to you. And we're going to see how off was I. It is during tribulation, correct? After this, I saw the four angels. One was standing on each of the four corners of the earth. The angels held backward the four winds. And there was no wind that would blow on the earth and the sea. And the angels have been given the power to harm the earth and the sea. And I saw another angel come out from the sun rising from the east. And he was ready to put the mark on the living God of, on, on people. He shouted to the four angels, Don't harm the earth or the sea or any tree. Wait until I have marked the foreheads of the servants of God. Then I heard how many people had been marked on their forehead. And then I heard that there was 144,000. After this, there was a large, uh, there was a large crowd. Um, and it was to be counted. And where there was every race, tribe, nation, and language. And the stood... Uh, and they stood before the throne before the Lamb. And they were, they were to wear white robes and held palm branches in their hands just as they shouted, Our God who sits upon the throne, His power and the, to save His people, and so does the Lamb. Um, and then... Uh, this is chapter 14. The Lamb and His 144,000 followers. I looked and saw the Lamb standing on Mount Sinai with Him was 144,000. So remember, this was a shout from the heavens. And I was uh, with Him was the 144,000 who had His name on His Father's foreheads and their names were written on their foreheads. Then I heard the sound of the heavens that was opening like a roaring flood and a loud thunder and even the music of harps. And now a new song was being sung in front of them and this God's throne in front of the four living creatures and the, and the, and the elders. So where's God's throne? Correct, in the heavens. So this is all in the heavens because it's talking about the creatures that surround the heavens and the 24 elders. Um, no one can learn that song except the 144,000 who had been rescued from the earth. All of those were pure virgins and they, have ne and they follow the Lamb wherever He leads. They have been rescued and presented to God in the Lamb and the most precious people on earth and never tell lies and are innocent. So they have never defiled themselves with women. So again, it's not a frequency. That's some bull crap that you've been told to believe in some crap that's going on out there. Because I'll tell you this, 
as it says in the scripture, there ain't no more than uh, a tenth of the world who's going to make it. No, the lamb is not Satan. The lamb is not Satan. The lamb is the word of God. The lamb is the true Messiah, right? It tells us that's the, that's the true one. Because through the lamb, through the word, all things were created and he was given all judgments over the people. Uh, names of foreheads, the mark of the beast. Like, no, uh, the names across the forehead means the people who can see and have understanding and follow the ways, right? Because it means knowledge. You have knowledge in here. The seal that's upon their foreheads. It doesn't talk about the forehead and the hand, which is the mark of the beast in chapter 13. Enoch is the lamb, correct? But, yeah. Uh... Uh, mercy over justice or justice over mercy. Um, again, that's a very tough one. That's a very tough one. Mercy over justice. You can't do that. Uh, justice over mercy. Justice over mercy. Scripture teaches us justice over mercy. Uh, tells us that. And he will not stop. I will, I, will, I will put my spirit upon this man. This is chapter 42 in Isaiah. I will, I will put my spirit upon this man. We'll read, we'll read from the scripture. I don't want anybody talking any goo goo gaga. So let's read it. And it talks about how he will not stop until justice is served. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. Here is my servant. I have made him strong. He is my chosen one. I am pleased with him. I have given him my spirit and he will bring justice to all the nations. He won't shout or yell or call out in the streets. He won't, bend, he won't break off a bent reed or put out a dying flame. He will make sure that justice is done. Chapter 42. Talking about the Messiah, the one to come. Wants justice. Because with justice means that you will, if you are righteous, you don't have to worry about that because your mercy is already on you because you changed your way. If you repent and actually start to follow the ways, I will blot out your sins from the book so you will be not judged on that day. But if you continue to do your sins after you have been told what is your sins, then it will be worse for you than any, any non-believer on that day, etc. Right? So... But yeah, since I was a child, I've always asked the question, why does God desire worship? Uh, God does not desire worship. God wants us to treat each other with love and respect. And by giving each other love and respect and being humane, that is worship. Because that is giving grace to his creation, for he created us all. So if you actually follow the will of him and do thy works is what gets you to know the kingdom of heaven. So if we sit here and we treat each other with love and respect and do all these things, that is worship. Because now you are giving thanks through people for what he put down here and working together instead of quarreling and following the devil's works and thinking that you're prideful, you're better than everybody else, all that other kind of stuff, right? So... Uh, man wrote that book? Uh, yes, inspired by God, wrote, written by man. You are correct. Manipulated by men as well. Don't forget that one there, Dave. Just to give you a little bit extra, a little bit of extra sarcasm there, Dave. <laughs> you remind me of King David. <laughs> but anyways, uh, where do you think the devil would live in today's world? Uh, where do I think he would live today? Uh, technology. Technology. Technology is the place to live, right? Because technology leads you to um, commercials, advertising, advertisement, all those types of things, which makes you think that you shall go and buy a new phone. Oh my gosh, did you see the new iPhone? Your phone's like six months old, dude. It doesn't even have enough space crammed on it yet. It could last another three, four years before it needs a battery. Um, you're going through uh, and seeing new shoe sales, uh, food. You're not even hungry, but TV shows will show you food. So then you become more gluttonous. Uh, TV shows showing women dressing very scantily. Uh, men coming out with no shirts on with all this perfect body, uh, washboard abs and all this stuff. Um, 
uh, sex scenes to make people think that that's how women and men are supposed to be behind closed doors and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, uh, so technology. If the devil was going to be anywhere in the world today, it would be through technology um, because that's the only way. Remember, it is your choice what you wish to do with your body. It is not on to, It's not his fault. He was created. He became evil. His punishment was to be cast down to the earth. He leads people into temptation. It is your choice whether or not you follow those temptations. Which angel that sits on each shoulder do you listen to, right? So that's where it comes down to. That's where it comes down to. And when you are righteous, you have the guardian angel, Michael, the archangel over God's chosen people who shall watch over them. So that's what it says. Uh, have you heard the creepy things happening with AI? No, I don't pay attention to... Um, I don't pay attention to uh, uh, AI. Uh, I remember I used to, back in the day, hear about people with their iPhones at 3 a.m. asking Siri or whatever, some weird questions, and they would, say, they would see things in mirrors and do some like, crazy stuff, and I was just like, man, I was like, just like uh, ghost stories and haunting, ha haunted houses. I never really got into that stuff. I just found it was all this kind of set up bullcrap stuff. Because I remember going to haunted houses when I was a kid. Like the fun haunted houses, you know. Um, and uh, when people would be in masks and kicking doors and scare the crap out of you. So I just thought that it was all the same crap. It's just a gimmick, right? Just a show to get people involved in some stuff. And uh, just like horror movies, right? You know, we watched them just because we want to scare or your girlfriend just likes it. And men would be like, oh, it's so cute because she'll, just, she'll cuddle with me because she gets so scared. And I feel like I'm a man because I can sit there and protect her from the screen of things that are happening. <laughs> the sound system makes it feel like it's real, you know. But uh, do you believe in talking snakes? Do I believe in talking snakes? No, I don't prefer to watch Disney movies. Uh, I'm not into that. Uh, thank you. Uh, but as in to say that the devil is reptilian, um, which is known as a snake, then yes, because we see people who deceive, which are called con artists in today's world, unrighteous people, then yes, if you're talking about them as snakes, yes, I believe in those people. But to say a slithering snake that's going to like come up to me and say, hey, buddy, I'm kind of hungry. Can you feed me a mouse? And I'm like, sorry, I'm a vegan. I can't do that. But that's pretty cool. You can talk. <laughs> I wonder what somebody dropped in my coffee because this acid is the bomb, dude. No, I don't believe in that shit. <laughs> Uh, Enoch is a con artist snake. Nope. Uh, Enoch is not a con artist snake. It's uh, too bad for you there, Yuri. Yuri's still a little angry. With a name like that, Yuri Catlash. Can someone remove Yuri, please? I just blocked him. I just blocked him. I think that it was Robert earlier. There was a guy who was on my thing messaging me, Robert, saying that um, Jesus was the only righteous man. And I showed him through three verses. Uh, the book of Job, he was a righteous and blameless man. I said, so right there, your Bible, your boy. And he said, Enoch never went to uh, heaven. He, uh, that's bull crap. Well, if you look in Hebrews 11, 5, his disciples, even his disciples knew who Enoch was and said he went to heaven without tasting death for God took him so he should not be punishable by death. Said it took him right to heaven. So this guy was telling me it never happened. And I said, well, your boy, his boys say the exact same thing. So what's your words now? And he tried, kept trying to send me to websites to look up what people's um, understanding are through their teachings. And I was like, but that's not scripture. They're, that's not scripture. That's people, what they come to with their conclusions, right? But yeah, uh, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who judges without mercy. False. False. That is false. For it does not say in the scripture that all of the righteous that they shall be that they shall then judge the, the earth. So what are you talking about? Those who are righteous will walk with the Lamb and walk in uprightness, and then they shall have all the books open in front of them, in front of the Lamb and God and the righteous, the ch the chosen ones, the elect, and then they shall judge the earth. And the hundred and forty four thousand. Can't forget that. So, again, um, anybody who is judging, and there's a difference between judging and correcting. When someone corrects, I have no mercy to sit there and say a, a child pedophile. 
I have no mercy for a child pedophile. You could tell me it's a sickness. You could tell me whatever you want to tell me about it. I don't give a shit what you say. You're led by a demon and you make a choice. You're no good. Period. I have no mercy for that person. You destroy a young girl or young boy's life. Period. Period. They are destroyed. You've destroyed them. So, should I have mercy on somebody who's like that? Hell no. Am I going to tell you you're going to be judged? Hell yes. Am I going to sit there and bug you every day and call you names? Hell no. Because I don't give a crap. I got better things to do with my life and talk to people about love and respect than to sit there and chastise people who are bad. They will get their judgment. But will I have mercy on them? Hell no. Is it saying in the scripture that they shall be judged? I agree with it. So guess what? I'm a part of judging with it because it is something I agree with. Period. Now, do you understand where I come from? That's exactly how it goes. You don't get to heaven. Nobody goes to heaven. For he shall come down to the earth, right? Only the righteous. For everyone, when they die, for they go to sleep. Don't worry about them, for they are asleep. They're, uh, they are not in the land of the dead or in hell or anything like that. They are just asleep. In that day, they shall all rise from the graves, from Sheol, from the uh, abyss, which means waters, the lands, all those things. And then they shall be judged, each one. And then the ones who are judged that are wrong, they will be thrown into the lake of fire, which is hell. Those who are righteous, they will live with God on earth, with the Lamb, their verse, for a thousand years. False there, Ed. False there, Ed. It says it right in Scripture. For they do not die and go to the heavens. They do not. Not until the day of judgment. Book of Daniel 12. Uh, what if you're cremen cremated? That's not your spirit. That's your flesh. That's your flesh. That has nothing to do with your spirit. For he judges the spirit. He does not judge thy flesh. It is your soul that he judges. Not your flesh. For dust you shall come, to dust you shall return. But your spirit, your soul, shall always belong to me until that day of judgment, when then I shall purify it. Uh, the kingdom of heaven, which is just righteousness, which means by his will. Search for the kingdom of heaven, which means to follow the will of the Most High. That's what it speaks of. Is Jeffrey Epstein asleep right now? Uh, yes. He's asleep, but you damn well know he's condemned. You damn well know he's condemned. Uh, who is God's chosen people? All nations and races. Tells you that in the book of uh, Daniel. He sees no color. He sees no race. He sees none of that. He sees only the spirit. So he says all nations, races, uh, uh, languages, uh, peoples. Uh, no, that's not God. That No, it's not. God will judge you, so no one should judge anyone. False. False. Tells you that they shall judge them in the end. False. The book shall be opened up in front of them, and he shall judge. Does it not say the Lamb and God shall then judge them with 144,000? Does it not say with the elect and the chosen that they shall trample on them as, as grapes in a wine press? Does it not say that in the scripture? Yes, it does. For they will find joy. Uh, for they will find justice in them. That when the corrupt and all of them get thrown out onto the streets and trampled by the saints, that's what it says. The righteous. So thank you. Are you feeling a little bit guilty or something there, Ed? Is that why you're a little bit nervous that people are judging you and saying stuff to you? Because Ed, you sound like you're a little bit scared. You sound like you're a little scared, Ed. Like you don't like to get judged on something. You feel like you got a guilty conscience there, Ed? I thought God's people are those who obey the Ten Commandments. Uh, the Ten Commandments are, are the PowerPoints. Are the PowerPoints. Right? That's what it says. Follow of righteousness. You're getting confused as a teenager. As a teenager, live life. Don't do bad stuff. Don't do drugs. Don't sleep with anybody. Be inspired to be a good friend. That helps people, keeping that childlike thing inside you. Don't be a bully. Don't think you have to wear flashy clothes to be accepted by any of your friends. Um, and always be there as a good pal to them. You're a child, man. You're a child in the Most High's eyes. Not until you know the difference between right and wrong, then shall you start to be judged for sin. Right? Tells us that in Scripture. Just be a good person, man. You got way too much in your life to worry about these things. As it says in Scripture, be like a child. So hold on to that forever. It's funny because of scripture. There's two things I always look at. Kids want to be like adults. Adults wish to be kids again. 
Just like humans. Humans wish to know about the heavens and the heavens wish to know about humans. I've never understood this concept. I've never understood this concept. Why can't one just be happy for where their purpose and what their placement is and enjoy them while they're in the moment? In righteousness, of course. Who is the most high? Aravat. Yeah, this is the resistance, man. We're standing against the system. We're standing against the system. What's the name of that band that sings that? The resistance. Uh, resistance. Um, they will not force us. We will be victorious. Who is my God? The same as everybody else is the most high. The question is, is do you really know him? That's the difference. That's the difference. Muse. That's it. That's it. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you, KTJ. The Muse. Yeah, Muse. Anyway. Yeah. Aravat is the most high. Second, it's the only scripture that says his name. And only he knew his name. Revelations 19, 11 through 16. The Lord of Lord, the King of Kings. And only he knew his name. Funny how in the book of Enoch is the only place it is said once. What? What? Enoch, a righteous man who was taken to the heavens, who was shown all things that were to come, but not for this generation, for a remote generation that will come. Enoch, a righteous man who will be living in the days of tribulations when all the godless and the impious shall be removed from the face of the earth before that great and dreadful day when justice shall be served. Hear, hear, everybody. Calm down in the court. Calm down in the court. But anyways, uh, there is a level of righteousness that you will sin no more. Or is it a battle of the la to the last breath? False. No. Uh, anybody who walks in righteousness, you can walk in righteousness. It's just a tough battle because when you start to walk the more in righteousness, the more sensitive you come to realize the evil shit that happens in this world. Right? That's what you realize. And when you get to that level, you feel very isolated because it's sad that a lot of people can't see at that level, but you cannot judge them because of that. You have to be more thankful than anything else for this. So what you have to do is by his will is show each other. Have patience, just like he's had patience for us for thousands of years, when he could have just said, man, my creation doesn't know me. Wipe this board off, set it on fire. I can create brand new for him again. This time I'm going to make robots that listen to me. You know, he could have did that. So his patience is what we're supposed to have for our fellow brothers and sister, just as he's had for us. So that's a true sign of worship as well, uh, following that way, right? We live in the dark world because of man's sins. Uh, no. Uh, no, Yahweh is not the name. Yahweh is not the name. Yahweh means the Lord, and Lord means Baal. Baal means master. Master means slave driver. That's why if you look at Yahweh, he enslaved his people. <laughs> that is not a righteous Lord to say, you know, for all the things you've done, I'm going to enslave my people for 400 years. People didn't even live for 400 years. You can't have generational curses. I'm going to punish another person. I'm going to punish you, your daughters, and your daughter's daughters, and your daughter's daughter's daughters, and I might punish your cousin uh, for the next uh, 100 years. Uh, just because I think that uh, this is what you deserve. Um, why? If my child did not do anything and walks in righteousness, they are cursed? Wow. Uh, false. Uh, Jesus is the Antichrist. He is the devil. Sorry. Uh, what do you think about space and stars? Uh, space does not exist. We live in a firmament. It is a petri dish. Um, and stars are luminants, which are just uh, light beings in the sky. Uh, that's all they are. But what you would call as a star means to be a wandering planet, which goes to fallen angels. Hence why uh, they have TV shows called Idols, uh, the Stars, or whatever they call it, Dancing with the Stars, um, a movie star, uh, because it's idolization, right? You shall not worship the star. What is the name? Aravat. 
how is Jesus the Antichrist? Because uh, uh, Jesus, Jays, Jays weren't in the alphabet until the uh, 1500s. So the name is not Jesus. Um, and second of all, the depiction of what they tell you that Jesus looked like was a fair skin colored man. So if he was a fair skin colored man and they changed his name, what else would they lie about in this book? If they could get away with changing a man's name, a man's story and his color and still put it in a book and 33% of the world would follow and believe this, what else could they lie about? If they could change the color and the name, <laughs> If they could change the color in the name, what else could they lie about? What else could they lie about? That ain't Jesus. This guy's white as a ghost. Says here he was supposed to be dark bronze color. Huh. But they put this picture in, you still walk in, you're like, oh my gosh. There's my Lord Jesus. The man who died for my sin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sitting there with a, a bleeding heart with a uh, thing wrapped around it. So, the Most High, the Most High did not send his son to die for anybody. The Messiah is the great anointed teacher who shall give understanding through him they should have salvation. Who is Yeshua? Yeshua means serpent in Greek. Yeshua means serpent. That's why Jesus referred to himself as a serpent. Just as Moses lifted up the staff with the snake in the wilderness, so shall it be for the Son of Man when he is lifted on a cross. Why would Jesus tell you about, just as the Son of Man shall be lifted on a cross, it shall also be like when Moses lifted up a snake on the staff. Wow. Wow. You know you're the second person to call me guru this month? Uh, or this week, um, or asked me if I was. Um, but anyways, so why would Jesus refer to himself as a serpent? A serpent is not good. I don't care what anybody says. A serpent is a split tongue, liar, deceiver, the tree of good and evil. The tree of knowledge in the Bible in the beginning to teach you good and evil so he could tell you good things, but also teach you evil things. A two-faced liar. A snake. That's what it's called. Uh, the Pope is. Well, the Pope. We could tell the Pope is. Come on. We could tell the Pope is. That's, that's obvious. Anybody in the Roman Catholic Church. I'm so close to God. But hey. Uh, can you go and get uh, the little choir boys for me there, Father? <laughs> you know. The Lord said, thou shalt not keep any child from me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. You can tell, obviously, those pieces of crap. And they're the ones that say that they work for their God. And their God's telling them to do these types of things. That's crazy. Paul said that he came, he became sin on the cross. He became sin on the cross. Jesus tells you he was sinning before that. Jesus tells you he was sinning before that. Uh, crooks is the post, not a cross. Uh, he was nailed to a post. Correct. Crooksification, which actually is Strauss. Strauss in Hebrew means upright stake. You are correct. Because back in the day, they did not want to cut down trees because they didn't have chainsaws and axes the way that we do now. So what they would do is they would knock off the, the branches that go up a post, dig a hole in the ground, and then they would stick the post in like pole vaulting and then tie a person to it from the top to the bottom. Hence, when they say crooks, upright, suffocation means if you're hanging like this so long, your ligaments give, across here tightens, and it's called suffocation. Crooks, suffocation to mean to suffocate while standing straight up we all learned something today well, we've learned a few things but but your wisdom correct you are right it was to be crooks so but it is to be on a cross which is a tree and did it not say anybody who to be hanged on a tree is considered to be a curse why would the most high curse a perfect man and why would Jesus cry out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Just echoing in Psalms 22, the prophecy of Jesus being hung on a cross, saying, My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? For I cry and pray out to you every day and night, but you do not hear me. Why would he hear his son's prayer? Why would he not hear him? Hmm. 
I thought he was hung on a pole. It is. It's a cross, though, to be marked, right? To be marked. It is a tree. A tree is a pole. They used to cut the tree down and cut its branches off and hang people from it. Every day in Jerusalem, back in the day, you can actually look this up. Every day back in the day, they used to take three people and put them outside of Jerusalem along the highway that used to come in. So people would see them hung there. So they would say, when you come to our city, don't mess around. We don't play around with criminals here. That's what they used to do. Yeah, look it up. It's actually pretty pretty crazy. They used to do that all day from sun, sunset, from sunrise to sunset. They would take three prisoners, not kill them, because they would just tie them up. And they would make them sit out there all freaking day and bake in the sun. Uh, the first Hollywood star was Jesus on a cross. Uh, no, false. Uh, the first Hollywood star would be Satan falling from the sky, right? Being cast out of the Garden of Eden, out of, out, out of, uh, out of the heavens. That would be the first, first star, right? Because then that's when you start to follow into scriptures, into this uh, prophecies, a script of what's going to happen. Prophecy, a writing of a play that is taking form into this world. Because the devil. Uh, what is the name of the Messiah? Ea. Ea Asher Ea. Ea Asher Ea. That is the name of the Messiah. Who was the angel that fell before Lucifer? No one. No one fell before Lucifer. Uh, Lucifer was the first fall. Lucifer and Lilith. They were both, both the first fall. For they were the ones who deceived Eve in the garden. And then they were taken out and the cherub was standing in front of the, uh, the garden with a, uh, with a flaming sword. What? Oh, you're home? Yeah. No. Every time I try to get close to the Most High, the demons come visit. Rodney, I don't know why you were blocked. Um, I went through my blocked list for some reason, and I seen that you were blocked, so I unblocked you. Come on. Up. My puppy. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, can you spell the Messiah's name? E-H-E-I-E-H, -E -E which is Eya Asher Eya. But E-H-I-E-H -E is the Hebrew name. Ah, uh, she just ran upstairs. She's an Argentinian Dogo and Presa Canario mix. Almost looks like a, a large pipple. A very large pipple. Uh, but glory to the Most High. Uh, you, where did you educate and did you gain all your knowledge? Um, scripture. I was dating a girl back in 2012. She was a Christian. I was really into her. And when I found out she had a religion, I was like, anybody that says they have a religion obviously tells you the character of that person. So it's a big part in their life. So because I was interested in her, um, I wanted to get to know her because I was always one of those lover boys that like to get to know how people work from the inside out. So I put some dedication and time into it. I read the Bible in 10 days, um, come to a lot of conclusions that I kept to myself uh, because I needed to verify uh, 2017, I was woken up uh, where I started basically being told, you need to get back into scripture. I got back into the scripture. I started finding a lot of secrets and things that were hidden. 2019, I seen something that uh, was out of this world, uh, so to speak. And it uh, told me something. And ever since then, I became this. I quit my job. I stopped working. Um, I like gave up my uh, company. I used to own a contracting company. Um, and then, uh, I got into scripture and then the more I start revealing truth, I found that more people were very hurtful and hateful because the truth stings, it cuts like a knife. So most people, because they've been lied to, first instinct is to talk crap to people because you feel foolish. So it's easier for you to scoff at somebody than to admit you're wrong. Not your fault, the world, because of pride and all these types of things. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy. Uh, what did I see? Uh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Uh, good evening, brother. Hey, Raha. How's it going? 
but yeah. I have a Alaskan Malamute. He's a big dog. That's cool. Um, uh, tell us. Uh, it is not for me to glorify in the Most High or to say the, say the things that I've seen. This is what I'm going to tell you. The scripture will tell me to tell you this. For I shall not boast in anything that I have seen, for only he shall boast in me, or give knowledge unto me, that I shall give to them. For no man shall glorify himself, or any of the things that he's seen or done, for that is in secret with the Most High. With the Most High, through him, all things shall be revealed, that you shall then see through the works and through your own understanding that you'll get. So, that's the only thing I could say. Because I'm not allowed to reveal exactly who I am. I'm not supposed to. By scripture, it tells you I'm not supposed to. Um, the scripture is scripted literally. You aren't 100%, bud. Um, I'm not 100% correct. Uh, please uh, show me and discredit me where I've been wrong. I would love, <laughs> I would love to, uh, to uh, hear um, and you pick out any of my videos and say this is incorrect. And I will, I will do an hour segment of just ripping you a new one. Uh, scripture is not literature, actually. Scripture is coded. <laughs> That's why most people can't understand the book and they take it out of context because they can't understand it because of their lack of knowledge. And I love your name. E. Sind. <laughs> your name backwards spells Sind. <laughs> Sind Sinclair. <laughs> Poor little fella. Uh, there is no good reason to believe that God exists. Um, yes, there is. Uh, creation. We see things that are beautiful every day. Uh, we see a world that was created that we can't explain why everything grows at a perfect 1.61 uh, ratio, which is known as God's sacred ratio, uh, which looks like a snail. Um, everything grows to its times, its seasons, um, its size, that it's a point to do, unless someone comes down and cuts down a tree or something. Um, air. The system that we need to take away the pollution, to give us fresh air, to keep us going every day. A land that provides for us the foods and nutrients and all the things that we need. Yes, God's golden uh, ratio. Um, so all these things. So to say that there is no reason to believe. Sounds like somebody got hurt when they were younger and want to blame somebody else instead of actually saying, you know what? Some bad things happen in this world, but you know what? I'm not going to let it tear me down and I'm going to still be a good person because not all people are terrible like that in this world. So whatever got you, I am sorry for that. Um, and I hope that your eyes are opened. I could have cut you up, but I'm not going to because you already feel like you're going through enough pain because you don't have him in your heart already. So um, I hope something um, I hope something goes in. I used to see shadowmen in the corner of your eyes, how you see like a shadow go by. Yes, I've, I've seen that, but I haven't had that in five years. Five years, I haven't. But yeah. Manitoulin Island. That is in Canada. I know that. I think. I believe. Yes, Manitoulin Island. I think that's up in... Um, Where is that? Is that up by uh, Sault Ste. Marie? We in the ecosystem. Correct there, Faithful Being 3. I like your name, Faithful Being. That's very humble. Very humble. I like that name. It's not Satan's domain. This is not Satan's domain. Satan has no power over anybody. Satan can only influence you. It is your domain that he has given us as a, not a test, but as an experience in a different form than a heavenly form. And it's either do you pass or do you fail going through the hard knock school. So this is not Satan's world. Satan makes you think this. Right? Uh, Lake Huron? Cool. Have you already had encounters with angels? Have I had encounters with angels? Uh, yes. Revealing the fallen from the faith coming soon. Uh, revealing of the fallen? Uh, that's, yeah. yeah we're, we're close to... Uh, we're close to the real Messiah being uh, being seen and uh, the world 
doing some bad stuff. Yeah, some bad stuff. So what do you think is going to happen when you die? Uh, when I die, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. Okay, so his name means I am that I am. Does that also mean Elohim? No. I am that I am is the word that created. In the beginning was God, and with God was the word. And through the word, he created all things. I am that I am. I will be what I be. I create what I create. I will be with you. Is the name Ea Ashur Ea, which is which is recognized as Metatron. Metatron is Enoch, who was taken up to the heavens, who was hidden and became flesh, walked with the Most High for 300 years while he was down here, and then went up to the heavens. Uh, what do you feel about the three days of dark? We are in the three days of darkness, man. We are in the three days of darkness. Do you not see the things that are happening in this world? What children are learning in school in uh, sexual ed classes? Uh, what they're doing at, uh, after school for Satanism now, uh, doing these, uh, um, these little things that, uh, uh, we call it, uh, the Olympics, their little crap that they do. You don't see all this shit. We are in the three days of darkness. You just don't want to wake up. You don't realize we've been living in darkness this whole time and now they're showing it right to your face. It's scary. And most people just want to reflect and say, whatever, <laughs> they can worship whatever they want. <laughs> We're okay where we are. Correct. You are okay because there's no fear to be put into you. Why? Because no one shall fear anything but the Most High and no harm shall come upon his saints, his elect or his chosen ones, etc. So if we don't hear God, does that mean that we are not saved? False. No, man. No, he shows you signs all day, brother. If you don't hear him, no, it's not that he doesn't hear you. He shows you signs. People can't hear him. That's why they have a, moder a moderator. It's called the Messiah. The Messiah who shall come and teach the people. It tells you. It was already written in the prophecies. They shall not hear the voice. Even prophets. People did not hear or obey. So what did they do? Send prophets to speak to the people. Right? They send people. So it's, it's not for everybody to hear. But by great signs that are around you, you shall see and have this understanding. He shall send out marvelous things in the skies. Which just means through the heavens. So through the world, right? It's just dimensions. It's dimensional things. Uh, I've been awake through... I'm one of those crazy ones that nobody listens to. Yeah, that's the worst part. And the majority of people think that you are crazy. Your family pushes you away. They talk a bag of crap and it's a bunch of blah, blah, blah. And it makes you feel really bad inside. They tell you you must be on drugs or you need to be on medications. All this other stuff. Uh, and accuse you of all kinds of false things. But yet... Everything keeps calling you and showing you this. And you're like, well, I stopped doing like all the bad things. And now it just it keeps getting worse. But when I was super bad, I never had a thought of any of this stuff. So what do you think's happening? When you're waking up, the devil's calling back for you. That's why Jesus says, when they turn around and uh, you clean your house, because you are the temple, you're the house, seven more stronger demons will come back and say, what the heck happened to our house here, dude? What's up, dude? No beer? No, no, no nothing for us? Yo, go get Tommy and go get all the other boys. We got somebody think they're switching sides on us. And then they start attacking you, right? So, I uh, don't use the word amen. Amen is amen Ra, which means, uh, which is the sun god. Hence why it's said in a Sunday church, sun worship, sun day worship, right? Day, day star, Lucifer, sun day worship, helio system, the, the sun. Sun worship, so yeah. So don't say that. Just say it's to be so, to be so, or glory to the Most High, because you know that it is correct. Right? All glory to the Most High. I lost my husband a year ago, and uh, a year ago to can't have my soul. Yeah. Does my spirit know the true God, or does my mind play tricks? Nope. The devil plays tricks with you, and if you are having tricks being played on you, odds are pretty darn good that you do know the Most High, because the devil doesn't play with fly shit the devil only plays with people who do not belong to him because he wants them right the ones that already belong to him he don't need nothing from them he don't need nothing from them they're already sold right they're condemned they can't say they're sold no one can sell their soul they can only condemn it because they can't be until the day of judgment right uh talk about the shekinah um the shekinah is the female manifestation of the most high 
which just means the feminine version, which means a soft, delicate, the word, teaching, nurturing, right? To understand uh, the motherly side. That's why it says wisdom. Uh, it shall be like from a woman's breast that she shall, a, a baby shall suckle for, for the milk, the land of milk and honey, coming from the petulia gland, the milk, going to the land of honey, which is the penile gland, to travel through the Red Sea, which is your brain, full of blood, moving and parting the left and the right side of your brain, because both sides do something different for your body. You detach from the flesh, walk through the uh, lake, uh, the Red Sea, defeating sorcery, things that you, uh, you see in this dimension, then go to the third dimension, meaning the penile gland, to see into the spiritual realm and have better understanding called the resurrection now you do not serve the flesh you resurrect it to rise up from death because the flesh dies the spirit lives forever now you are in the penal gland that is the land of milk and honey but anyways but I am going to get off of here I only want to be on here for a little bit uh, but tomorrow I will be on here at 4 o'clock and I will be on here for a long time I will stay on for like 3-4 hours I will download what I've said today I will put it on my YouTube channel by tomorrow morning which is the same name here I hate advertising that man I feel like so I feel so gross and feel so cheap and, and don't forget to check me out on Instagram and don't forget to buy a t-shirt I, I feel so dirty when I have to say that I have a, a, a YouTube program straight up um, but anyways so you can see what I'm saying and everything that I say go into the scripture because I do say what scripture it was written in and you can also say okay pause what did he actually say there and then Google it and then it will bring you to the scripture that I'm saying it and you can confirm what I am saying because I love not to be tested in a way that you're gonna be like yo screw this guy um, I don't mind you do that because when you do that, at least you have passion because you want to prove me wrong. So you'll climb down that rabbit hole. I'm going to prove this guy so wrong. And then you'll find out a whole bunch of information and the Most High will reveal to you. And you'll be like, yo, dude, like I still hated you in the very beginning because I thought like you're just a prick who thinks he knows it all. But then I started looking at all the scripture that you're saying this. And bro, it says it, what you're saying. This is insane. This is really insane. Glory to the Most High, I came across your page. For some reason, I hated you, but I couldn't push my thumbs to get off your page. I kept listening, and I just wanted to punch you right in your face. But anyways, I want you to feel that, because that passion, that fire, will drive you to actually deep dig deep into something, right? So, uh, glory to the Most High. But anyways, um, but anyways, uh, I hope that everybody uh, has a beautiful day. Uh, share love and respect with your family. Um, the world's getting worse. Do not fear these things. Don't fear these governments with their bullshit fake news and all this other crap. For no weapon shall be formed against you. Uh, share love. Don't give up hope. Um, always be kind to one another. Even on bad days when you feel like you've done something, always apologize to somebody just to fix what you've done. Uh, don't be afraid to swallow your pride and admit when you said something that was wrong, you were a little wrong. You're a little misunderstood or something like that. Always take correction for a wise person will take correction. These are all through pro books of Proverbs, which is a great book to read because there's 31 and there's 30, uh, 31 of Proverbs and there's usually 30 to 31 uh, days in a month and you can read one a day. So it's a book of wisdom. It doesn't talk about death and all that crazy stuff. It just talks about finding wisdom and treating people with love and respect and uh, not to be a fool for things, right? So... Um, Glory to the Most High, and everybody uh, stay positive, and I will see you tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Glory to the Most High, Arabat. Thank you.